Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. You know, each weeknight, we take you first through the Big 7 stories of the day. At the top of that list tonight, the Six Storm team telling us to be weather aware with the threat of storms and parts of our area under a severe thunderstorm watch. Already, we've seen spots in Middle Tennessee getting socked. Take a look here. This is video from our Nashville affiliate showing drivers making that wrong call to try to drive through that standing water. Remember, turn around, don't drown. And then over in Ashland City, the winds were howling and the rain was coming down hard earlier in the evening. So some spots already being impacted, that is for sure. Tracking the situation for us right now and what we can expect here in East Tennessee, Chief Meteorologist Ken Weathers is over in the storm center. Ken. Yeah, Bo, knocking on the doorstep of the plateau now, and it's going to race through the area. It's not going to stick around long. So if you're worried about losing sleep tonight, unless you go to bed right now, I think you're going to be okay. But damaging wind gusts really going to be one of the bigger concerns with this line that's about to move through the area. A level two out of five risk for severe storms now. Knoxville westward, that's why we went weather aware and we still have a severe thunderstorm watch for Cumberland Fentress and also up into McCrary counties all the way through southeast Kentucky into Harlan County that goes until 9 Eastern 8 Central Time. There is one warning down towards Chattanooga, but that's where kind of the strongest part of this line is. It's diving more to the south. So I really think along and south of I-40, the more likely areas to see severe storms, but I'm watching this one that's just about to head into Fentress County as well. Could be some gusty winds with this. And as I mentioned, it's not going to last long. It's going to push through between about now and say 10, 1030, and then it's going to be done as we go through the overnight hours. But another round of rain will actually develop as we go through the day for tomorrow, pushing through the region that could cause some additional flooding concerns. So not only are we talking about the potential for some wind damage with this line that's moving through between now and again about 10 or 1030, but some locally heavy rainfall. You add to that tomorrow's opportunity, especially the first half of the day and Oh, by the way, there are additional opportunities for rain Friday, uh, Thursday and Friday as well that could aggravate this situation. So we have had this feast or famine uh, really forecast over the past month and a half or so. And I do think that could be a bigger concern after we get rid of the wind damage threat for tonight, Bo. That's going to be locally heavy rainfall. I'll talk about the rest of the week's forecast, that potential, and thankfully a quieter weekend coming up. We'll look forward to that weekend, that is for sure. Ken, thank you. Meanwhile, Knox County Parks and Recreation announced just really in the last hour, all county programs are canceled tonight because of the air quality concerns that we've been following for you. The county making this decision to, quote, keep your health and well-being in mind. Meanwhile, parts of the area spent the day under burn bans. Knox County was among those. According to Rural Metro Fire, Knox County Air Quality Management has issued the burn ban due to the air quality conditions in our area. Now, burn ban is also in effect for Oak Ridge, issued by the city's fire department more than 24 hours ago. According to the Oak Ridge Fire Department, no new burn permits will be issued until further notice. And, of course, outdoor burning without a permit is a violation of city ordinances. Our next Big 7 for you tonight. Traffic moving once again after a slowdown on I-75. And, and here's what caused it. A tractor trailer fire. The Andersonville Volunteer Fire Department sharing this picture of what's left of that big rig. At one point, northbound lanes had to be closed just north of the Emory Road exit. We sent a crew up to the wreck site just as traffic was starting to move once again. But some big backups were still there. TDOT says... The left lane was reopened around 45 minutes ago, but keep a watch for those slowdowns. It'll take a while to get everybody back up to speed in that area. Next on our Big 7 story list for you, Governor Lee celebrating the start of the next phase of the Alcoa Highway project. Now, the focus is a stretch of road between Woodson Drive and Cherokee Trail, about to go from planning and bidding to now construction. It's the north end of the Alcoa Highway corridor from McGee-Tyson Airport to just south of the Tennessee River. The scope of the work is so large that it had to be broken up into seven segments. The southernmost by the airport is finished. Another stretch between Maloney Road and Woodson is virtually complete. And TDOT says the part from Little River to Maloney Road is 60 to 70 percent finished. Last week we told you how the work will add one lane in each direction going from two lanes to three plus a new look for the Cherokee Trail interchanges and the entrance to UT Medical Center. Now, TDOT explaining that when Alcoa Highway was created in the 30s and 40s, traffic was a fraction of the 70,000 or so cars that we see today. The decades between saw, well, all sorts of driveways and business entrances added, creating dangerous spots where people need to slow down or stop to turn. These upgrades aim to get rid of the dangerous turns while making way for growth into the future.
Local and state leaders put their shovels into the ground in a ceremony to mark the work done already and what is still to come. As part of a, a trip around the state, Governor Lee is making, dubbed the Build With Us Tour, highlighting infrastructure projects. Transportation needs were a major priority for the Lee administration in the most recent legislative session as the governor pushed to invest more than $3 billion in Tennessee roads. Investments, the governor argues, are needed to support a growing state. When you're going to have traffic and commerce and economic activity like you see in Alcoa Highway, then if, if you don't invest in the future of that, then you will stop all of that from happening. This is an excellent example of the reason we needed the Transportation Modernization Act. This project has been broken up into bite sizes and, and piecemealed out over a number of years. And so all of our citizens have had to, had to deal with that over the years. And so what this will allow us to do is to start looking at being able to do bigger projects uh, faster projects in being able to deliver projects uh, more quickly. TDOT says this phase is 1.6 miles long, replacing more than 20 retaining walls, two traffic signals, plus bridge work, as all six lanes will be moved into the bluff next to the roadway. Right now, the lanes are sandwiched between the bluff and the river. It's $187 million out of about around a billion expected to be spent overall on Alcoa Highway by the time that the work is done. Now, fifth phase goes out for bids in August. Our next Big 7 story for you tonight, more big gains for students on TCAP tests. District level scores out today show Knox County students doing better across the board. Those core categories of English, language arts, math, science, and social studies. Now, the most notable change for the first time, district-wide scores in English language arts surpassed pre-pandemic numbers. 41.2% of students scored proficient across all tested grades in Knox County. That's compared to 39.5% last year. Plus, it's higher than the state proficiency rate, which is 38%. Last month, we showed you statewide numbers that were also up in all the big categories, despite concerns from parents whose children, for the first time, faced the prospect of not being automatically promoted from third to fourth grade if they didn't make the cut on TCAP reading scores. The state says participation rates were up from last year as well. Our next Big 7 story takes us from the last school year to the next. It's not far away, and some students may need updated vaccine shots. Uh, the Tennessee Department of Health requires all children going to school or child care to have several vaccines, including those for measles, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and polio. Children enrolling in kindergarten and seventh grade will have a list of boosters they will need. Tdap is a vaccine not only required for school children, but is highly recommended for new parents and their families. It protects children from tetanus and whooping cough. Little children can be very, um, that can, they can be at great risk for that. The whooping cough can really affect young infants before they're able to be vaccinated. Schools will require parents to provide immunization certificates, which you should be able to get from your physician. There are medical and religious exemptions. And you can schedule an appointment to get your child caught up on vaccines by calling your local health department. In Knox County, that number is 865-215-5070. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. The department is asking everyone to call ahead, though. They do take walk-ins, but you may have to wait a little bit longer. Another vaccine option for you, Health Fair, hosted by Centro Espano, coming up on Friday from 10 to noon. The event offers COVID-19 vaccines and boosters, back-to-school physicals, and, well, more vaccines and mammograms, blood pressure, blood glucose tests, you name it. It's at John Tarleton Park off Sutherland Avenue, and again, that is Friday starting at 10 o'clock. Starting the, or Saturday, I should say, the NAACP of Oak Ridge and Anderson County is hosting its back-to-school fair as we get the kids ready. They host this event every year at the Scarborough Community Center Gym off Carver Avenue. In addition to a free medical clinic, the event has booths to get kids excited about STEM and robotic programs. Plus, parents can sign their kids up for free meals, learn about their child's curriculum, and meet the new teachers. As an added bonus, there will be a free hot dog meal and the police department will be there giving away free backpacks as well. Again, this is all at the Scarborough Community Center gym. It goes from 1 to 3 this Saturday. Take advantage of it. And the school bells are already ringing. Alcoa City students started back Monday in a staggered return to classes, running through Thursday when all of them will be back in the classroom. 
Well, it's a sign that the fall session will be our session will be here soon for the rest of the districts in the area. We have a full list of those start dates for students. Just go to WATE.com. We made it very easy for you. All right, back to school means another big date on the calendar. Tennessee's sales tax holiday. Make sure to mark your calendar as Tennessee's sales tax holiday is well, coming back next weekend. So get ready from July 28th through the 30th. Sales tax will be waived on clothing and school supplies up to $100 or computers up to $1,500. On top of that, Tennessee's food sales tax holiday starts next week and will last through the month of October. And a big mystery still going tonight about a body found at a Third Creek Greenway Park. Knoxville police are asking for your help as they continue to investigate tonight. A passerby walking on the Greenway saw the body around 6.30 p.m. Saturday, called police. According to the medical examiner's office, foul play is not suspected at this time. But told there has been no identification yet. The man had several tattoos, some of which include Aryan Nation style tattoos and a swastika. Knoxville police shared some pictures on social media, but we do want to warn you, some of you may find these photos disturbing. According to KPD, detectives had received numerous tips about the possible identity of the man. However, his identity was still unknown at that time. Take a look. If you recognize any of these tattoos or know something that could help out in this investigation, you are asked to please call KPD. That phone number for you, it's right there on your screen, 865-215-7317. A ribbon cutting ceremony today to celebrate the new residency program at Methodist Family Medicine Clinic. The program will bring med school graduates to Knoxville and Oak Ridge to continue training in their journey to become family doctors. Now, the new clinic began serving patients back in February, and with the new residency program, future doctors will be able to get great firsthand experience in dealing with primary care. The director of the program tells us the residency will play a vital role in bringing care to our area in the near future. In the next 10 years in the United States, we're going to, uh, estimates are we're going to have a 38,000 uh, physician deficit in primary care. Um, training new family physicians is a really important part of trying to replace that deficit. We're also told that because the Methodist Family Medicine Clinic is, an, is a member of the Covenant Medical Group, the program will have amazing resources and several great locations to place their future physicians.